Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to go through how to send a message from a nested actor to its calling actor whilst preserving the possibility of reusing that nested actor in other areas of code. So let's have a look at the example on the screen here. If I launch this example, the ultimate aim is to be able to send a message from a nested actor to its calling actor without that nested actor becoming dependent on its calling actor. Up until now, to get an actor to do anything, we've created a method for the actor. It then right clicked, gone to act framework, it then created a message for the actor. And so when the actor gets sent that message, it performs the action. Now that works if an actor is sending itself a message and if the actor is sending a nested actor a message, that's absolutely fine. But if we want a nested actor to send a calling actor a message, if we used the same techniques, the actual code would work and run. However, that creates a dependency between the nested and the calling actor. This would stop that nested actor from being reused in other applications without the calling actor being present. Let's go through an example here. So in the code, we have a calling actor and a nested actor. In the calling actor, we want to be able to receive some string data and we're publishing that on the front panel via a user event. And I've already generated a method that generates that user event, which we can see here. And I've created a message in order to execute that method, which we see here. So this is the way that you shouldn't do it. If we opened up the nested actors core, I've already created uh, the event case. So when we click send abstract message, something will happen. There's nothing inherently stopping us from going to read the callers and queue and then sending that message directly to the caller. So if we go to the calling actor, messages for this actor, and then send update UI. We could wire this up. And I'll just save and close this. I'll now run that code. So you could see I was able to send my data from a nested actor to its calling actor. I'll show you again, message two, that message would get sent. However, if I now open up a blank project and I copy the nested actor to that project, notice how nested actor gets added to the project, but the calling actor gets added to the dependencies. So the nested actor is dependent on its calling actor, which we don't want. Let's say we want to reuse that nested actor, we would be unable to because of that coupling. Just to show you that it's only that message which is tying the two together, I'll go back into actor core, delete that message, and now drag across the actor. Notice now the calling actor isn't in the dependencies. Abstract messages are going to allow your nested actors to say, hey, I have some new data for you, calling actor, without knowing anything about who the calling actor is. The nested actor just knows someone might want my data, so I'm going to send it as a message, but it has no idea what the calling actor is going to do with this message. Nested actors actually come in two parts. The first part is the nested actor sending this message. The second part is the calling actor receiving that data and acting upon it. Okay, let's crack on with creating the first part. So in our nested actor, let's right click our actor, the actor class that is, go to actor framework, and then create abstract message for caller. So now we need to enter a name for this uh, message and let's call it uh, new data and we can click OK. 
We now need to define what the attributes of this message are going to be. In this case, we just want to send a string from our nested actor to our calling actor. So I'm going to right click and place down a string. And I can rename this string to be, let's say, string data. And now let's click create message. Great, so by clicking create message, we've created this abstract message for caller that we can see in this new virtual folder. Our message is called new data message. And this particular class, if we right click and go to parent class, you will see that it inherits from message class like all of the other messages we've seen so far. However, if we expand this message class, notice how we have a send new data, like we do with the other types of messages in Act Framework. However, we don't have a do VI. Remember that our nested actor only cares about sending that data. What happens with that data, what is done with that data, it doesn't care about. The calling actor is going to create this do VI by creating a message that inherits from the message created by the nested actor. Hence why we call it an abstract message. The nested actor has created an abstract layer. To create this, what we have to do is go up to our calling actor, create a method that we want to execute when we receive a message from our nested actor in this case, we want update UI to execute when we receive a message saying a new data is available. So let's right click update UI, go to Act of Framework, and then create a child of abstract message. When using the Windows browser, we have to select the parent abstract message class, which is the message that we created from our nested actor, which we called new data message. We can click OK and now in the background LabVIEW is scripting our new message. The new message appears under our calling actor under messages for this actor and notice how update UI message has a do VI but no send VI. That's because our nested actor is sending the message and it's now the calling actor that needs to do something with that message. On its own, the nested actor has no way of telling its calling actor which do method to actually implement. After all, that nested actor has no way of knowing what the calling actor is going to do with that new data. So before the nested actor is launched, we need to write the message implementation that the caller is going to execute when it receives this abstract message. To do that, we're going to use a VI that was created for us when scripting that abstract message for caller. So in our nested actor, we have the write new data message. Now this was created when we created the abstract message. We're going to pull that into our calling actor and we're going to use this VI to tell our nested actor which message implementation should be sent to our calling actor. So if we look inside this VI, all it does is bundle that message implementation, i.e. the message class, into that actor's data. The message implementation we will drag from our calling actor. So if we go to our calling actor, messages for this actor, and then drag across update UI message. and save. That's now everything we need to do for our calling actor. So let's close down this uh, actor call and now head over to where we're going to send this abstract message. So if we head over to our nested actors actor call, we want to be able to send data when we click the send abstract message VI. Although we could send the abstract message directly from the event helper loop, for best practice, I'm going to create a method inside the nested actor to do that for us. So inside the nested actor, I'm going to right click, go to new, invent VI from static dispatch. From inside here, I'm going to have some input data. So I'll put the string down. 
then change that into a control and I'll call this string data. Now I need to find out who the calling actor is so I'll right click go to data communication actor framework read caller and cure. I'll drag in the send new data vi and this is the abstract message to send to our caller. It needs a message and cure so I'll wire that. I'll pass in the string data. It also needs to know what message implementation or message type it needs to send. The message type to send, we actually bundled that into our actor before we launched the nested actor. Just to remind us, if we look at the calling actor, we defined the message type here. Let's unbundle our actor. Select the message type, in this case new data message, and wire that in the top. We can then wire in our error terminals. And I'll save this VI as send updated string. On the front panel, I need to remember to wire up the connector pane. Click save. In order to execute this method, which will send the abstract message from the nested actor to the calling actor, I'm going to create a local message that will be sent in our event structure in order to send the abstract message. To do that, I'll just right click the method we've just created, go to actor framework, and then create message. I'll now go to messages for this actor, and then send updated string. I'll send that to the actors and queue, and we no longer need to have the callers and cure here, so I'll delete that. So we'll wire up our data in, and that's it. So now when we run this demo, we should be able to send the string data from our nested actor to our calling actor. So from our launching VI, let's click run. And in our nested actor, let's type in hello world, send to calling actor, and our calling actor received that message, hello world. But here comes the ultimate test. Could we create a brand new project, drag across our nested actor without pulling across our calling actor in the dependencies? So let's create a brand new project and create a copy of our nested actor if we open up the dependencies, we see the actor framework debug library and the items in our VI live. However, we haven't brought across the calling actor in our dependencies. Great, job done. Abstract messaging in actor framework is one of the more challenging concepts to get your head around. However, I'm going to leave all of the code I showed you today in the links in the description so you can test out abstract messaging for yourselves. As always, please like, comment and subscribe and let me know your thoughts and feedback. Catch you later.